please join me in giving a warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Apollo 17 Lunar Module Pilot, Harrison Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. Congratulations on everything that you've done. Uh, it's just uh, absolutely remarkable what uh, has come from the, the foundation. Uh, the, I want to say, first of all, good evening. Uh, and uh, second of all, protect your wine glasses. Some of you are aware of what I'm going to do. I don't think they protected their wine glass. For those, for those of you who have no idea what's going on, those were little soft moon balls. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, my heartfelt appreciation goes to the Neil Armstrong family, uh, the Purdue Research Foundation, the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, and particularly to Jim Hayes for this opportunity to be with you tonight. And uh, having realized that David Ray was going to be here from SAIC, I have a little bit of a conflict because I used to consult for them. <laughs> but it's a great corporation and much appreciated your sponsorships. Uh, and, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and also, before I get into the, uh, the so-called keynote address, uh, we should recognize the newest member of the Armstrong family, Mary. Mary, would you stand? And uh, being here also gives me, uh, of course, a personal opportunity to congratulate Trent Kingery and as the 2022 recipient of the Neil Armstrong Award of Excellence. Uh, he and his family are with us, and Trent, it's been great to be with you the last few days. Uh, just enjoyed it tremendously. And Logan, uh, don't go away. I have something for you. Uh, well, Neil Armstrong, as I hope Rick and Mark and Mary Noe was my hero. He was also my friend. We worked together with many others to prepare Apollo 11 for its historic mission. And later, Neil provided his usual great wisdom, calmness, to the NASA Advisory Council I chaired during the Bush administration, the uh, George W. Bush administration. I never met anyone other than Neil who could better have better represented America as the first man on the moon, and I sincerely mean that. Neil was always prepared for what might be asked of him. Just one example, small one, but still an important indication of his character. At an advisory council lunch at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia, Neil spontaneously began to talk about the history of the Langley Center, much to the surprise of everyone present. But for 20 minutes, he totally captivated those present with detail and context about the center and its history. A remarkable tour de force. Now let me talk a little bit, though, about innovation, the cornerstone for this gala. From my perspective, innovation by individuals and teams has four essential components. Motivation, preparation, imagination, and of course, execution. Motivation is that component of innovation that we may have the least control over. In many cases, motivation probably relates to the relationship we have with our parents, 
our guardians, our mentors when we were children? What examples did they set for us? Was there instilled an intangible desire to not disappoint them? Did their beliefs and motivations translate into a drive to serve God, country, family, and others who were close to us? Was there some particular person or event in life that determined the path one would follow into the future? Maybe tonight's occasion is one of those events. Motivation in the over 400,000 Americans and their families that led to the success of Neil Armstrong's landing on the moon ultimately was fed by patriotism. Patriotism born of the threat posed by, to human freedom by the Soviet Union. The triggers to patriotism in my Apollo colleagues, both NASA and by far more abundantly in industry, came from individual sources and events. Belief in the American dream, further stimulated by Sputnik, military service, engineering, or scientific curiosity, by the desire not to fail others, by the spirit of competition. Even then, the tender into which the spark of patriotism flashed was formed by many earlier experiences and exposures in life. Something to behold, for example, was the extraordinary patriotic reaction in Mission Control Center when the Apollo 8's comm signal was received at exactly the second it should have been received as CSM-103 sped home from behind the moon. Now, preparation that leads to innovation requires the widest possible exposure to critical thinking as reflected in literature and history and particularly in problem solving. Members of the Apollo generation were generally exposed, fortunately, to such preparation by an educational system in which critical thinking and true knowledge were primary objectives. In recent decades, these primary objectives have been diluted in public education, as many of you are already aware, and even diluted in much private education by a lack of parental exposure to the political agendas of the so-called educational elite. However, that appears to be changing as it should. Since Apollo, individuals have been much more on their own to overcome the decay of elementary, secondary, and advanced education systems, particularly relative to critical thinking and true knowledge. Fortunately, many individuals have risen to embrace this responsibility, many of whom are ASF scholars with us tonight. Thank you very much for doing so. During Apollo, the effects of preparation in critical thinking were evident everywhere. But I want you to remember as I go on that the average age of the Apollo engineers throughout the Apollo program was still in the 20s. As an example of critical thinking in Apollo, if a system anomaly appeared in test or in flight, a small team of relevant individuals would spontaneously gather around a table with the available data and ex experience. I was fascinated by this process. The team would quickly work out what caused the anomaly, determine what options existed for resolving or working around the issue, and present those options and the team's recommendations to management within the time available for decisions, sometimes mostly overnight. The interactive expertise of these youthful teams as a whole was greater than the sum of the expertise of the individuals comprising them. 
The most extraordinary example of this process, of course, was seen in the successful recovery of the Apollo 13 crew, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Schweiker. Imagination as a component of innovation was rampant, of course, during Apollo. Anytime there was an issue to be solved, or indeed an opportunity to take advantage of, individuals and ad hoc teams never hesitated to move a new idea forward for management's consideration. The path from a good idea to a management decision was very short. For example, Flying Apollo 8 into lunar orbit in December of 1968, when issues with the lunar module and the Saturn V threatened the program's momentum, took only four months from decision to do so to launch. Moving the launch day of Apollo 10 forward by only one day, so more potential landing sites for Apollo 11 could be observed and photographed, and a daylight splashdown could occur as well, took only two meetings during one week. Many of you probably have forgotten that Apollo 8 splashed down in the dark. That became important at that time. Gaining three more seconds of hover time for NEO by rapidly developing a small experiment package powered by the sun as a substitute for initially planned but heavy science experiment package took only one meeting. Showing that the Apollo 13 lunar module guidance platform could be realigned by sighting on the Crescent Earth took a few hours by the simulator crew I was working with down in Florida. Looking at a table covered by items in Apollo 17's Challenger cabin to come up with a fix for a broken lunar rover fender took overnight. My goodness. A solution quickly presented itself in that case in the form of photo maps unneeded, light clamps unneeded, and of course, gray duct tape. There are just a few examples, these are just a few examples of imaginative thinking that took advantage of the flexibility and rapid response possible within the Apollo management system. One other example of imagination dear to my heart was Neil's spontaneous decision to fill the Apollo 11 rock box with lunar soil. In his words, when I asked him about it, quote, with just the rocks in it, it looked a little empty. So I filled it up with soil, unquote. This soil sample became the basis of our early understanding and continuing understanding now of the resource potential of the moon, not only in space, but also back here on Earth. And finally, execution is the final essential ingredient in innovation. Certainly the success of over 400,000 Americans in meeting President Kennedy's challenge to land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth shows how motivation, preparation, and imagination came together with talent, skill, and sacrifice. Successful execution in Apollo provided a principal catalyst for eventually ending the Cold War, for beginning the movement of human civilization into space, and for beginning the, win the understanding of the early history of the Earth and indeed the origin of life. Now the remarkable history extraordinary service, and current commitments of tonight's 2022 Neil Armstrong Award of Excellence, Trent Kingery, epitomize all the ingredients of innovation, motivation, preparation, imagination, and in, in execution that continues today. In addition, Trent is a Marine, as was Neil, and as was my father, by the way. Once again, congratulations, Trent. Outstanding. Now, finally, I would like to express my deep appreciation to Kirk Brown and the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation Board and to Caroline Schumacher, 
for honoring the 50th anniversary of Apollo 17 this evening. And also to Robert Holmes for the scholarship in my name. Much appreciated. Thank you all.